Hello everyone and welcome to Robot C for Dummies. In today's video is going to be one of the last ones that I'm going to upload to my channel and I wanted to say to all of my viewers out there thank you very much for supporting my videos and do feel free to comment on um, any of my videos on how they are and how they could be improved upon because I'll be glad to uh, work on my videos and make them uh, better to, um, to allow more users to come and see how they could um, benefit from my video. So, um, so in today's video to focus on, as you can see from the title, I'll be, um, I'll be setting and um, by end of this video, you would have known um, how to hopefully, you know, play around with a potential meter and a shaft encoder. So this is the agenda that I've set for myself as well as this video. So hopefully by end of this video, you would have learned what a potential meter is and a shaft encoder is and how they are going to work. Uh, that would be uh, the physical characteristics of both these sensors. You would have also learned how to set up your potentiometer and shaft encoder. Uh, and the last step is how to program both these sensors for your robot. These three steps are the ones that uh, many students in uh, who are taking part in the VEX competition might not know. And I have to say that it, both all these three steps are very easy to do if you could follow along my video and see how to calibrate how to calibrate these uh, sensors so you could use it for your vex robot and i'll also be including a virtual stimulation that will be uh, showing you how these sensors would work and let's jump into seeing what a potentiometer is. So if those of you who follow along, this is a potentiometer. And I'm pretty sure everyone would have known this is a, a standard potentiometer that's going to be included with your VEX kit. And as you can see, there's this um, white part of this potentiometer and that's where your axle goes to and you could install this potentiometers using uh, standard VEX screws the through this uh, small brackets that you have over here and 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 the way that these potentiometers work is uh, if you connect an axle through this white part if you protrude an axle through this uh, white part it's going to, uh, what happens is when the axle turns, this potentiometer is going to record a certain uh, number of values for its degrees of rotation. So what do I mean is I have a VEX manual over here. And as you can see, it says here the center of the sensor can rotate roughly 265 degrees. That's the maximum value it can rotate. And do know that any any types of rotation above that value, it will cause the sensor to malfunction or it won't give you the right feedback. And and also where, while you're programming this sensor, do note that you could only set a value from zero to 495 for your program to work with this sensor and anything above or, or below this value, it can cause your program to not work with this sensor. So be careful using that. And I'm gonna show you a sample code to do that. And also, so coming back to the potentiometer, this potentiometer is actually an analog sensor. So if some of you have uh, looked at my previous videos in this channel, uh, you would have seen that uh, a potential, I have included a, li a list of sensors on who what is analog and digital and potentiometer is uh, going to be considered as an analog sensor so you would connect this uh, this single wire that's coming out from this analog sensor you're gonna connect it to a cortex so if you look at the cortex you got analog and digital here and so you would connect uh, this sensor to any port uh, within this analog um, sensor here so it can be connected to port 1 it can be connected to port 2 and so on until port 8 so that's how you would connect um, a potentiometer and this is a sample code that I've included for a potentiometer so if you could look into this I have said here under task main I have by the way I have configured a standal uh, um, Pardon me, pardon me. I, I have to include a clawbot as my robot. And 
so that would be my potentiometer for a claw bot and if you could see this is the motor value that I've set so the way this program is going to work is robot C is going to bring you along step by step so what it's going to do is it's going to debug for you step by step so if you look at this under task mean I have a motor value that I'm going to set so for example my motor value is going to be at full speed of 127 when something uh, when I rotate the axle for so for example if my motor uh, rotates what happens is until the potentiometer is greater than uh, 3500 which is that value that I wanted to go towards um, it's going to and this is the port that it's connected to the potentiometer the potentiometer um, port is extremely important here you have to include this um, under this uh, command and if you look at this it says here yeah uh, my motor is going to spin in a positive direction with this full power until it reaches this value so whenever you say that pot until potentiometer greater than this it's going to spin um, uh, more than that value so for example if I have uh, a potentiometer that goes um, say if you if you have a I don't have a demo piece here but if you have um, say a, a arm that's going to be connected to a potentiometer and that arm it if, if you're gonna uh, knock it down and it's going to go to a value below 3000 above above 3500 my potentiometer would spin back to get back to where it started which was 3500 so for example if I if I have an arm, let's just say I have a, an imaginary arm over here and what happens is my if my arm goes anywhere um, beyond 3500, this potentiometer is going to detect that and it's going to try to bring back my arm to where it, it started, so which was 3500. And also, it's going to stop and it's going to wait for like 0.5 seconds and after that what it's going to do is if you're going to rotate the axle say if you have a arm over here and if you're going to rotate it in this anti-clockwise direction if you're going to rotate it this way what is going to happen is until my potential va um, va meter value reaches to a point where it's thousand and you have to get it back to thousand my arms are gonna move so that's how basically this potentiometer controls and um, that would be a sample code that I've included I'll be including this in my description below do check it out and that would be uh, how the potentiometer works I unfortunately I could not in include a virtual world simulation because it's hard for me to find a um, a 3d simulation of how this is going to work but I'm going to include one for the upcoming shaft encoder in the while so um, right now let's jump to the shaft encoder so for those of you wondering uh, this is the shaft encoder and I've also uh, briefly explained about this in one of my previous videos so in a shaft encoder you have two wires coming out from this this is by the way a digital sensor those of you um, uh, who are interested this is a digital sensor there's going to be a top wire coming out and this is a bottom wire and what happens is usually you will connect the top wire to the lowest numerical value so what happens is if I have a top a top wire here this is going to be my top wire right my top wire is going to be say connected to port 1 and my bottom wire which is which is this one over here my bottom wire is going to be connected to port 2 and same goes for every other thing for example if my port uh, if my top wire is going to be connected to port uh, 7 my bottom wire is going to be connected to port 8 so so uh, that's how you would connect a shaft encoder and by the way for those of you who are wondering why what's the big difference between potentiometer and shaft encoder well shaft encoder can measure as many rotations as you want so for example if you are trying to um, measure how much your chassis moves or how much your robot wants to move for uh, a certain distance you could use the shaft encoder but for um, movements such as arms or claws or any other um, movements that involve you to rotate less than 265 degrees a favorable uh, sensor to use would be a potentiometer um, as that's a really light part to use and also you know it, it's less of an obstruction as compared to say um, a shaft encoder and it look and it uses less wires as compared to 
uh, say a shaft encoder so uh, that would be the difference between a potentiometer and shaft and uh, and that's how you connect both of them to a cortex right and let's jump into the program for shaft encoder and uh, before i do that let's just change the platform let's just change the platform all right so this is going to be um how my um, how I have set up my shaft encoder. By the way, I'm, I'm not going to depend on a claw bot or anything because I believe everyone <laughs> everyone who's uh, hopefully taking part in the competition won't have a claw bot. So, um, you know, if you go to motor and sensor setup, I've actually set up a standard chassis uh, type of situation where in port one, I've connected a left motor. I have set up what type it is. Remember to set if it's in reverse or if it's going to be in a normal direction and set what encoder is connected to that particular motor because that's very important if you want to use simple natural language be careful because you have to set what encoder port you're kind of, you have connected to that particular motor so it could also be an integrated motor port and you could use that to um, say connect i to c and you know you could use that to connect but in this case since i'm using a shaft encoder i'm connecting a uh, digital one and if you look at this in in digital sensors i've included a right encoder uh, to this port and, and and it might look a bit a bit strange but um, you know i tried using some trial and error and this is how my program kind of works like so uh, don't get me wrong but uh, this is how um, it looks and i would highly recommend everyone out there to also do some trial and error and see how um, you know you might have to uh, play the opposites by switching around your encoders with your motors and, and so on and so forth so, and but just to get uh, a brief intro do set your encoder port to that particular motor and also set the motor side so for example my left motor is going to be on my left side my right motor is going to be on the right side and so this is going to be digital one and and if you look at this I have set both my encoders as quadrature encoder and my um, this is going to be by the way uh, if you have lost touch the, the first port that I've connected here in digital one is going to be my top wire and this is going to be my bottom wire and so it goes here my top wire connects here my bottom connects here and so so once when I have connected and I have initiated this motors I'm going to say okay and so I have configured my motors and sensors. Now I am only use, going to use simple natural language. So if those of you who saw my very first video that I uploaded in this channel, this is the same code that I used. And I'm going to use this same method over here as well because the, you know it's just one line of code and you would be saving many lines of code by just using this. And trust me, in actual competition, if you use this, you're going to be less confused and you're going to be looking into it straightforward and also it could save you a lot of time when you're trying to troubleshoot so i would highly recommend you to use natural language so go um so i've set it to go forward for 500 degrees at a full speed this is going to be by the way my unit type and and those of you who are confused on what i'm trying to say is uh, under simple behaviors, I have said that if you go forward, this value that I've said is going to be my quantity, this is going to be my unit type, and this is going to be the speed for my motor, and same goes for uh, turn left. So, whenever I say forward and turn left, these are all integrating both my left and right motor. So, you don't have to specifically say, you know, right motor do this action or left motor do this action. So, all of them are synchronized constantly with this one single line of command. So, forward is going to go forward for 500 degrees of the speed of 127. It's going to turn left. Um, at for 550 degrees and some people might be asking you know um, I actually want my robot to turn 180 degrees but why do you uh, why do I why do I have set it for 550 degrees well the actual 
degrees of rotation um, for the robot well you for it to turn 180 degrees completely you might have to set it to 50 degrees because the wheels are kind of small and you want them to spin for a higher degrees of rotation for for the whole robot to completely turn 180 degrees so uh, that's going to be turn left and i want my robot so the way this robot is going to work is it's going to go it's going to turn 180 degrees and it's going to come back to its initial position so that's a simple line of code that i've included let's compile the program and the funny part is there could be chances of failure if this program is going to work or not uh, trust me let's see if it's going to work so i have set a table bot in my virtual world and see, let's see how it's going to work Oh, it works. So that's how hopefully uh, shaft encoder works. And um, and that would be my video on how our potentiometer and shaft encoder works. Thanks for your support again, guys. And I do look forward for your com comments. Uh, do type them in in my, um, in my videos and I'll be happy to um, reply back. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead.